question. And today I would want to deal with quantitative techniques, November 2021, question number five. And this is a, a question that was tested under the following NEC diplomas. So we have the diploma in supply chain management, diploma in entrepreneurship. We have a diploma in business management. And basically, most of the NEC diplomas have uh, these quantitative techniques as a common paper. So then in question number 5A, they gave us the price of uh, the commodity as a function. Then we have the total cost. And then if you read the question very well, what they wanted us to do, number one, what they wanted us to do, number one there, is to provide, number one, is to give them the total revenue function. So number one, they want us to give them the total revenue function. So the total revenue function, this one is what we abbreviate like this. To be able to get the total revenue, normally what we do is to take the price per unit times number of units. Price per unit times number of units sold. So in short, total revenue is price times quantity. In this case here, then my total revenue will be equal to my price, which is 200 minus 8Q. But remember that because this price has got many terms, two of them, two terms, then it will be good for me to come and do what here? After them in brackets. And then we have the quantity outside. So please go ahead and open the brackets. When I open the brackets, what do I do? The Q has to be spread to each of these terms. Therefore, this will be 200Q minus 8Q squared. Because this Q coming to this gives us 200 Q. And then this Q and this Q will give us 8 Q what year? 8 Q squared. So number one, that is what we were supposed to do for part one of this question. And then part two, what do they want us to do in part two? They want us to give them the number of units that maximizes profit. Number of units that maximizes profit. Now remember that for us to be able to maximize profit, first of all, we have to give them the profit function. Profit is normally abbreviated like that, pi. So then how do we get the profit function? Profit equals total revenue minus total cost. Profit equals total revenue minus total cost. Fortunately, now we have our total revenue, which is 200Q minus 8Q squared. I have to put this in bracket minus the total cost. What do we have as our total cost? It's given here. It is Q squared. It is Q squared. Minus who? Minus 16Q like that. 16Q, minus 16Q. So from there, we shall go ahead and open brackets. We shall go ahead and open what here? Brackets, because within brackets, there is nothing that can be combined there. As per body mass, you're supposed to combine whatever is in the brackets. But really here, these are unlike terms. So go ahead and give us uh, our simplified uh, equation without uh, brackets, and then what do we have here? Of course, outside here, we have an implied positive. Positive is a weak sign. Whenever we have a positive outside, then the terms inside here will remain with their signs. So it is 200Q minus 8Q squared. And then minus, look at this. There is a negative outside. So when I open my brackets here, the signs of the terms inside here, will have, this was a, a positive. Now it becomes what here? Minus. So minus Q squared. Now this becomes what here, plus 16Q, plus 16Q. So please go ahead and put like terms together. So what we have, this 200Q is a like term with this. So it becomes 216Q, like that. Great. So then we have this and this are what here, they're like terms, which gives me minus 9Q squared, minus 9Q squared, because it's minus 8 minus 1, minus 8 minus 1. So then... It's after doing this that I'll need, first of all, to remind you about a tool that we shall need for purposes of uh, optimization. For purpose of maximizing profit, you must understand the differentiation. So if we're given here y equals ax raised to power n, then how do you get dy over dx, which is differentiation? If you're given y equals ax raised to power n, to get dy over dx is very easy the power falls down. So that you'll be talking of na, na x raised to n minus one. So two things here, the power falls down. And then of course, from the old power, you must deduct what here one, you must deduct one. 
What do you mean with this? It's a very simple concept that I'll not even be labor to explain. What I imply here is that um, if, for instance, you are given like y equals 10x raised to power 5, to get dy over dx, to get dy over dx. So in this case here, come and drop 5 down. Drop 5 down. When you drop this 5 down, it will be 10 times 5. So that gives us what here? 50. So 50x raised to a new power. A new power, which will be 5 minus 1. So 5 minus 1 gives us what here? 4 there. So for us to be able to maximize profit, then we need to come and create what we call a first order condition. And the first order condition basically, first order condition basically, they want us to differentiate this. It will be D profit over DQ. So go ahead and differentiate this. Remember, there is an implied raised to one there. There is an implied raised to one there. So the, when this one comes down, it gives us 216 Q. Q raised to a new power. How do we get this new power? It will be the old power minus one. The old power, which was implied as one, is one there, of course, minus one. Then it will be one minus one, which one minus one, which gives me zero. So this is Q raised to zero. Minus, please go ahead and differentiate. So the two comes down. So this gives me 18 Q raised to two minus one. Because whenever we are differentiating, we must always do what here, take the old power minus one. So two things, the old power falls down. And then from the old power, deduct always one. So then this gives me basically, this will be 216. Any term raised to zero is one. So 216 minus 18 Q. Remember the first order condition, we are supposed to always to abbreviate this to what here? To zero. We are supposed to abbreviate this to zero. We are supposed to equate the function to zero. The first order condition says the first derivative. First derivative means differentiating ones. We we'll differentiate to ones. That first derivative, function must be equated to zero. So it is at this juncture that you must come and give us the value of Q. So go ahead and make 18 Q the sub. So this will be minus 18 Q equals, when this goes the other side it becomes minus 216. Therefore, Q will be minus 216 all over minus 18, like that. Minus 216 all over minus 18. Minus 216, minus 216, minus 216, minus 216. So it will be minus 216 divided by negative 18 like that, which gives us 12, 12. So 12 units. So if you want to maximize the profits of this company, then you must produce how many units? 12 units. For your level, there is no good reason for you to go to the second order condition. No first order condition is good enough. So please go to the next question. The next question that they want us to do in respect to this, they want us to give them the number of units that maximizes revenue. Now this time round, they want us to maximize revenue. They want us to maximize revenue. No problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. So number three, they want us to maximize revenue. They want us to maximize revenue. They want us to maximize revenue. So in this case here, how do we maximize revenue? Number three, maximize revenue. Maximize revenue. So the first thing that I would need is the revenue function, the total revenue, which you have just said here is price multiplied by a quantity, which is my Q. So my total revenue will be my price, which is 200 minus 8Q multiplied by a quantity there. Please see this, that I'm putting price in brackets because it has got many terms. It has got many terms. So if I open the brackets then, what will I get here? My total revenue will be 200Q minus 8Q what here? Squared. So, ladies and gentlemen, they wanted us to maximize total revenue. They wanted us to maximize revenue. So, the first thing that I've done is to derive the total revenue function, which I already have. And the moment you give me the total revenue function, then I should be able to maximize it by using what we call the first order condition. So, the first order condition here will be dr over dq. dr over dq. So, you go ahead in this case and differentiate this. So you differentiate this, remember there is a power one there. 
So the power one comes down. So this will give me 200 Q raised to zero. 200 Q raised to zero. Minus what here? Somebody minus 16. Minus 16 Q. What have I done? I've taken these two down. Two times eight gives me 16. 16 Q raised to positive one. So remember that this has to be equal to zero. And remember, Q raised to zero is one. It's the same as saying 200 times one. So then this will be 200 minus 16 Q equals zero. When I take Q as the subject of the formula, then this one here will be minus 16 Q equals minus 200. Therefore, Q will be minus 200 over minus 16. Minus 200 over minus 16. So you get your calculator, you get your calculator, then we have here minus 200, minus 200, minus 200 divided by minus 16. which gives me 12.5 units. So if you want to maximize your revenue, you must produce how many units? You must produce 12.5 units. You must produce 12.5 units. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the last question here, the last question here, what is the last question? The last question, they want us to give them the maximum profit. They want us to give them the maximum profit. So for maximum profit, then what do we need to do? Unfortunately, I had rubbed my profit function, but there's no problem with that really, because the first thing that I need to do here is to come and get my profit equation. Remember, my profit equation is total revenue minus total cost. Fortunately, we have the total revenue. It is 200Q minus 8Q squared. That is total revenue minus total cost, which is Q squared minus 16Q minus 16Q minus 16Q. So then when I open my brackets here, I'll be left with, of course, there is a positive uh, implied, positive one. Positive is a weak sign. So this will be 200Q minus 8Q squared minus, when you open brackets here, what do you have? It will be minus Q squared plus 16Q like that. When you put like terms together, when you put like terms together, we have this on this, giving me 216, 216Q. Minus 9Q what year squared. And if you remember, the quantity which was to maximize profit was 12. 12. So Q is 12. If you want to maximize profit, we got that you must sell 12 units. So please come and plug in 12 here. So then this will be 216 times 12 minus 9 times 12. Q squared that is. So 216 times 12. 216 times 12. 216 times 12. 216 times 12. 216 times 12 minus 9 times 12 squared. So then this will give me 12 what year? 1296 like that. And that marks the end of what year? The end of this particular question. So ladies and gentlemen, remember this is a paper called the QT, which is taught under very many neck diplomats. It's a common paper. If you're doing diploma in supply chain management, if you're doing diploma in entrepreneurship, if you're doing diploma in HRM, human resource management, right? If you're doing a diploma in information sciences, then you must be doing QT. And this is one of those greatest questions, which was question number 5A of November 2021 that I've been able to do. So I would want to welcome all of you to this uh, new technology of teaching. If you're doing any NEC diploma, you don't need to go to anybody's physical class. Don't. What you need is a powerful laptop or a powerful phone where you'll be able to access videos that you have done. Like this is module two. Each module normal fees is 8,000. The normal fees is 8,000. And then you study from wherever you are with all the convenience. And it's a very affordable model. Like our normal fees, I've just told you, is 8,000 for the entire module. So meaning that the three modules, you'll basically pay a total of 24,000. Three modules, and then you get a diploma. You get a diploma, 24,000. And without hustling, you're doing this from wherever you are. And because you're learning it through ICT, through Zoom, through videos, then you are getting uh, uh, to also learn the most important 21st century skills, which are needed. So this thing of you going to a physical class are long gone, stay at home, stay wherever you are, and then get to learn. It's affordable, it's convenient. And you shall be able to get your diplomas very, very easily. Of course, after we teach you, then we shall be able to register you with NEC as private candidates, and you'll be able to do what you have to sit for your exams in some 
of these registered examination centers. Otherwise, my name is Dr. Joshua Ura. Please share this clip with all your friends who are basically doing these diplomas. Thank you and thank you so much. Bye-bye. And of course, I can't forget to mention that if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.